Uh, are you guys ready? Yeah, w- yeah. Hello, and welcome to Way Too Ready. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to We've Been Ready. And welcome to Way Too Broad, a place for friends to talk about the things that they're really, really ridiculously excited about. I'm Hannah, and these are my co-hosts, Aaron and Ben. Hi, Aaron. Howdy doody. Hi, Ben. Howdy doody. <laughs> That's our test phrase this week. It's a secret word, and um, every time we say it ever again, we all have to scream and run in circles, which will be really inconvenient you can't, for our audio settings. Yeah, exactly. You can't tell that we'll be running in circles as this is an audio medium. Right. Um, we also have a special guest this week. You should say, um, in the studio. In it the makes studio. it sound so fancy. In the studio with us this week. <laughs> in the studio with us this week. We also have a special guest. Our first... I would say you're our first guest that is not part of a rowdy crew of other guests. <laughs> I think that's accurate. Interesting qualifier. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, welcome to the studio. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of our f- f- most loyal listeners and friends and stuff, you- Ian, my husband. <laughs> that's a weird Hello. last name. <laughs> <laughs> once, once I found out his last name was my husband, I knew it was meant to be. It's a real time saver when you're really tired. <laughs> Mr. My Husband. <laughs> so, welcome. Welcome, Ian. Happy to, to have you show. join us. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Um, so we'll get into more about why exactly... Uh, Mr. My husband is here <laughs> later, but <laughs> but we thought there was no reason for him not to join in the fun of the whole the whole episode. So so that's what we're doing. He's nodding, just for the listener. <laughs> what is everyone drinking this week? We have the mixologist in the studio to that actually explain. Normally, Hannah's like. I don't know, something my husband made me. (laughs) (laughs) So, well, we can start then, if you want. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Well, I have a glass, it's more of a cup of water. And what's that? I have some iced tea. Nice. Ian has some iced tea, but there's no ice in it. Hey, that's a nice looking jar. Oh, yeah, that's a glass from Aaron's wedding that Ian's drinking out of. See how I eagle-eyed that? Yeah, I know that jar. (laughs) It's kind of a unique size, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, it, yeah. It's kind of a different shape. The size, yeah. like the lid, is a is a typical like uh, narrow yeah. mouth mason jar. But yeah, it's kind of the sh- the shape is is kind of. You're a narrow mouth mason jar. <laughs> you know, I've been told that <laughs> mostly by my dentists over the years. <laughs> um, and then finally, what are we both drinking that you just took a thousand minutes to make? Well, I had to squeeze lemons. Um, <laughs> no, it's just a. Uh, suppose oh, it's still whiskey. It's a bourbon whiskey sour. Oh. And I'm yeah. really glad that the lemons worked out because the last two times I bought lemons, it was that sad occurrence where you cut into it and it's just like dry on the inside. Oh, almost. I hate that. Oh, no, trick lemons. I had a weird lemon. Um, it was completely hard on the outside. I had like waited too long, and so I was like, I'm gonna try to crack into this and I like sawed and sawed and sawed with my little knife but it was completely juicy inside it was great for a oh, huh. interesting. but it was like almost completely hard on the outside curveball it was like a nut lemon <laughs> <laughs> lemon nut <laughs> yeah it's like a citrus nut so I don't know for the is. sour is it just straight lemon or do you heat it at all do you like heat the sour mix or something um I don't know what exactly is in the pre-made stuff? I think it it probably depends, but this is just like simple syrup and lemon juice. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah, it's very tart. I'm enjoying it a lot. So thanks, Ian. 
You're welcome. <laughs> Hannah just subtly reminded me that I was talking not at the microphone. Yeah, you were looking at a different... You were looking at your drink while you were talking about it, which is like... It's it's polite. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at someone when you're talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> but that did face you away from the microphone. So. It's all yeah. right. We we didn't all become pros overnight. We're pros now. Yeah, hundred percent. That pros. was my, my implication. <laughs> Aaron, what are you drinking? Um, I have a partial can of cranberry lime seltzer, Excellent. and I have um this sixteen ounce can of a beer I got for free. Excited. Mm-hmm. How'd you get free beer? Well, I got... I know some people. Don't act so surprised. <laughs> I I got a four-pack of this free beer. It was one of those things that like, I was visiting. Oh, it's a long story. Somebody gave it to me. <laughs> 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 I think Thanks. it's I think it's best for everyone if we just leave it at that. <laughs> Very mysterious. I like yeah. that. I have three more of them. I'm I'm happy. I'm a little picky about beer. I don't like bitter beer. I think you all know that about me. Um, IPAs. Yeah, I don't like IPAs. So I, this is a Kolsch, and it's it's drinkable, and it was free. It was made here in Durham. Wow. Yeehaw. The end. I liked when Aaron started to try to tell that story, and the very first sentence she leapt over the part that I cared about, which was the free part. She was like, "Yeah, I just I got this four pack of free beer," and the, like went to go on with the story. <laughs> that that's fine. It's... Somebody gave it to me. I don't it's know. But I didn't like do anything scandalous for it. My friend Definitely had not stolen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's totally long story. And it's best if it's not recorded. So, <laughs> um, Ben, what are you drinking? I ain't drinking shit. I forgot to get a drink before we started. Oh no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't drink shit. Yeah, I'm drinking <laughs> <laughs> one Ben, no cup. Just a friendly reminder <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> Don't he drink said shit. he, but he said he he ain't drinking shit. So, well, good, good yeah. Ben. So good, way to go, Ben. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I beat all the divine beasts in Breath of the Wild. Just a Breath of the Wild update <gasps> for everybody. Congrats, blame. And it's really Thank subtle, you. but in this podcast, if you go back and listen, every time someone says Breath of the Wild, I blow into the microphone. <laughs> Do you? You you can hear it in last week's episode. Oh, that's awesome! Yes, as the editor, I do know that. Yeah, kind of an Easter egg of sorts. (laughs) (laughs) It was a a pre-Easter Easter Easter egg. (laughs) It's a um, just an egg now. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a regular egg. It's a groundhog egg. A reg egg. Valentine's Day egg. Valentine's Day egg. Did you see, I don't know if this is true, that the woodchuck bit the guy on the ear this year? The groundhog? Yeah. What did I say? Woodchucks and groundhogs are the same thing, actually. Are they? They are. Aren't woodchucks, I thought woodchucks were beavers. Woodchucks are groundhogs and groundhogs are woodchucks. (laughs) I didn't know. That's my. Did you write that? I did. (laughs) That's oh, my wow. wood, woodchucks and groundhogs are the same animal song. I did not hear that it bit. I think it the, bit the dude. That's fucked up. Yeah. How many, week, how many weeks of winter is that? <laughs> I think it's like winter forever. <laughs> I think it's like... That's, that's where in hell. Winter yeah. forever. A recurring theme. That's actually like the expected outcome of you sticking your ear into a groundhog's face. That's not yeah. how it works. Yeah, he's <laughs> he sticks his ear into the groundhog's face. Watch the the video. The groundhog didn't leap from his arms and like cl- latch onto his head. He like l- sticks his ear to the groundhog's mouth to like hear how many more weeks of winter. What and, the and fuck they, are you wait, talking what? about? 
What are you talking the, about? The groundhog, the <laughs> groundhog comes out, and if it sees its shadow, it goes back in, and if it doesn't, it leaves, and that's how you know. No, okay, but the way that they do it is <laughs> then they lift the groundhog to the guy's ear, and the groundhog whispers and tells the man <laughs> if it's true. I'm telling you. Go look it up what on the, the internet. Fuck? It's impossible. Punxsutawney Phil would never be, would never whatever you said <laughs> look, <laughs> look it up look it Kayla, up do you remember do you remember going to see punxsutawney phil yes or except it was a girl at the time it was punxsutawney phyllis is the every, is that the name of the groundhog or the person the groundhog okay nice marmot it's a marmot <laughs> oh is that the same i don't that's one thing i know marmot's like a weasel no that's it's from the, no it's a martin no, it's the species name is Marmota Monax. So is he just really wrong in the Big Lebowski? No, it's the fifth, whatever. I don't remember how this shit works, but it's like, it's probably from the same genus. Genus. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah. Marmots are large squirrels. Nice marmot. <laughs> he was so fucking wrong. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Yes, he was. It was a weasel. It was a what? It was a we- or a ferret or something in the in the act- in the movie. Okay, what else is going on? I'm not going to find this video. And if what Aaron says is true, I don't want to see it or know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So, I, I saw it. What else did we do this week? What else did everybody do this week? What did uh, you do this week? Aaron got some free beer. I got free beer. <laughs> <laughs> As get, oh, Molly and I have uh, done a cool thing the past couple nights where uh, over dinner we play a bunch of Dominion and we call it Dominion. Oh, I um, love that. Yeah. I, saw, I just saw that on Instagram. Yeah, we did it tonight too. And the last round we played, we each picked five of our favorite cards to play. Or five of our oh, favorite cool. action cards. So nice. that was fun. Yeah, that was a good time. We haven't played Dominion. Molly in a while. has beat me. We played six games. Three last night, three tonight, and she beat me in four of them. Five of Damn. them. She beat me in five of them. Yeah. Damn. She beat me in all wow, three tonight. Sounds like what it's like to play against me. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it was well, pretty not... pretty rough. <laughs> well, like I try to let so in games of three or more people. Ian wins frequently, and, like, lots of people win besides me, but when Ian and I play one-on-one, I I feel like I win, like, a majority of the time, like, to the point where where I was trying to not win as much because I didn't want... Wow. Oh, oh I see. I didn't oh, want Jesus. you to lose interest in that, playing with me. The times that you won, Ian, it was actually you... Hannah losing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you weren't mixing that up with Splendor? Because I think... I think I win a lot with Dominion. Well... I guess we'll just have to play them both and see what happens. Oh no, we have to play more games. How horrible. <laughs> um, Kylie and I tie a lot in Dominion. Dominion. Or like, we're oh. like one point off. That's But cool. we've actually tied more than like I have with anyone else. That's neat. Oh my god. Um, another yeah. update is, a homework update, is that we have been watching The West Wing... Oh, oh really? Yeah, I will say I will say Ben, it took me personally 3 episodes. Like at the end of okay. the third episode I was like, okay, now I really want to watch the next one. The f- mm-hmm. the first few were like purely like I think it's just a little different of a show. It's like mm-hmm. a, such a very specific it was it's really interesting, but I think it was, you know, I think that the intrigue lies in in the dialogue and not necessarily anything specifically like situational of mm. interest. You that know, that changes as it goes on, though. I can totally see that, but like yeah. the first, I feel like three are just purely establishing characters, and yeah, then that's true. after that, I was like, okay, now I want to know what these people are up to. So, yep, yeah. What do you think about the West Wing? Ian? You've seen all of it, haven't you? I don't think I've seen all of it. Um. I think I've seen like a season or two, but it's been a while. Didn't we start it's watching? Been it? It's been a while. It's been a while. That gets me every time. <laughs> this is 
One of the things, one of the many things that's fun about recording a podcast with Aaron is that mm-hmm. Ben and I both listen to uh, yeah. Comedy Bang Bang and Aaron doesn't. So when Ben and I reference Comedy Bang Bang, Aaron takes it as a genuine and original Although joke. that's more of a you talking to Now I feel like thing. a fucking fool. That's true. Don't. Oh, I feel like a fool. <laughs> I just want to be honest oh my God. about Paul it when we're knocking down it. all it's the like, bags in the closet. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll genuinely Bro. laugh at something that you guys say, but you're just like making an inside joke, and I feel like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! No, it's okay. Uh, no not that much. much. I get over it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we don't think you're a fool. Thanks. I just don't, I just didn't want, I, like, I don't like to let things stand if I'm, if they're jokes I'm stealing. Oh, you yeah, know? that's true. That's oh, all. I'm fine with it. Yeah, <laughs> obviously Ben's cool with it. Ben's cool You're, with it, You yeah. could think of it as, as saving me some feelings of fool. <laughs> Lushness. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, cool. I don't have anything else, I don't think. Any more oh, I finished, homework? uh, I finished my, the... Fourth Foundation book. Shit, you've been wow. really reading like a Ben. Yeah, they're so good. It got so, especially like midway through the third one, it got super, super good, and I like couldn't stop reading it. And now I have to buy the rest. Fuck! Why don't you go to the freaking library, Ben? I'm gonna go to the bookstore because I like. I don't like. I like owning books. I know you said that, but don't complain about it. I just give you a solution. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to buy them. True. If you want to, yes. then stop complaining to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been slacking on my reading. I kind of hit a book that's interesting, but it's not like compelling in that way where I want to keep picking it up. But yeah. I did. I did find out that my brother and I finished the same amount of books my big brother and i finished the same amount of books in january so now we have like a competition um i want to give a shout out to fiona apple for being a really interesting person and songwriter (laughs) i started keeping um i started keeping a list of of song lyrics that i really like this week and uh i haven't actually added this yet but there's this um, there's this, I listened to her, um, latest album, The Whole Way at Home, which is actually from 2012, so it's not that, she hasn't been active in a little while, but, um, and the, the title is so, so long. The, it's the one that Hot Knife is from. It's like, the idler wheel is better than the turning of the screw, right. and it, It's blah, like blah, the blah, longest, blah, 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 I think it's the longest do. album name, or was for a while. <laughs> Um, I, I was extremely obsessed with it in 2012 and I went back and listened to it today and like, I know exactly why. Cause she's just like, she's got so much emotion in her voice. She's like, so clearly like being very personal with it. Like I've read interviews with her that are so interesting. Um, and I like her a lot. She's a great songwriter. Uh, but yeah, she's a great songwriter. And the line that I'm going to put into my list that I haven't yet is, um, from that album, she goes, I'm a tulip in a cup. I stand no chance of growing up. And I think it's just, it's like a sad line, but I think it's Love really that. good. What are some yeah. other, this is, I'm, I think I'm first this week. Is that right? Oh my God. Yeah. This album oh, name fuck. is insane. Can I yeah. read it? Wait. The idler wheel is wiser than the driver of the screw and whipping cords will serve you more than the ropes will ever do. Yep. That's what I said, basically. <laughs> That's, that's, a, <laughs> that's exactly what you said. <laughs> so, what were you saying, guys? You are first. You are first this week. Yeah, let's just roll right into it because my obsession this week is actually songwriting. So, Are you is, serious? Wow. It's serious. So, that's perfect. I want to hear more lyrics from your list. Oh, okay. Hang on. Let me find it. I'm a tulip in a cup. It's cra- It's 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 a really cool thing that I know. It's another thing that if I say this, you're gonna tell me that I totally could. But I wish I could do it. Whoop, whoop. I wasn't gonna say that. I was like, yeah, I wish you could too. <laughs> you can. Not okay, everyone has the talent. I didn't say yeah. I wish I could too. I said I wish you could too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I think you could. Okay. I, you know. 
It's one of those things. I, I can I can do anything I want. I'm a strong, independent woman. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. So, <laughs> song lyrics I love. Okay, so this is from um, a song called "Kill the Director," or as the Wombats would say, "Kill the Director," because they're British. They're so British, <laughs> like <laughs> as opposed to the, but those partially British Brits. Well, you know that song. Um, I, I was in like a 2008 phase. Like pretty much all these songs are from like exactly 2008. But um, <laughs> it's good year. Do you guys, yeah. <laughs> but do you guys remember that song? Let's dance to Joy Division. Mm-hmm. No. Let's um, dance to Joy Division and celebrate, and celebrate the, the irony. irony. Everything yeah. is going wrong, but we're, but so, we're so happy. happy. That's a jam. That that's them. <laughs> that was like their big hit that made me listen to their album. And the first line is, I'm back in Liverpool. That's the first thing to say. So, just, like, very British. They're okay, just, but... like, hyping it up. It's just... <laughs> it's great. I'm not... Listen, <coughs> I ain't mad about it. But this is the first few lines of a song. I've met someone that makes me feel seasick. Oh, what a skill to have. What a skill to have so many things that make her distinctive. But they're not mine to have. No, they're not mine. And then there's more. I this like this song he mentions East Enders. I'm just saying they're very British. That's all. <laughs> no contest. <laughs> so that's one. Do you guys mind that I, I'm singing all of these? No, I, I like it. it. Okay, and then this is the ending line from a song by a band called The Matches, called Between Halloweens. Um, wow, and these it's, really are 2008 songs. <laughs> yes, extremely. Um, I don't know any of these. The Matches had that song Salty Eyes. Remember that song? No. That's a good song, too. When you okay. belong to a song. Salty Where was I in 2008? Eyes. I don't know, man. I want to see if this pattern continues where Aaron hasn't heard of it and then Ben starts singing. I feel like I've lost like, a year of Hannah my life. Completes it. <laughs> okay. This one is I was a Duke last Halloween. This year gonna be James Dean. Just wish I knew who we are in between. Mm. That's how that one goes. <laughs> and that's the only point. That's the only. That's not a repeated line, but they named the song after it, so obviously they liked it too. Um, okay, there's two more. They're shorter. There's the, uh, you know, the shins, Aaron. I do know the shins. Um, this song is called Pink Bullets. Do you know this song? I don't. Um, so this is like from somewhere in the middle. So it, the, the line, I won't sing this one cause it's way up high for me, but since then it's been a book you read in reverse. So you understand less as the pages turn or a movie so crass and awkwardly cast. Even I could be the star. Hmm. Which I just really like. One. Yep. Uh, and then uh, this one's really simple. This is my last one um, from another band from 2008 called Black Kids. Um, the song is called Hit the Heartbreaks, but it's B-R-A-K-E-S. And, oh, clever. And the first line is, oh, boo, what can I do? It's not me and it's you. And then it's like, you've been hitting the heartbreaks, but it ain't no use because we're still going to crash because you're still keeping after me. It's flattery. And that's how that one goes. <laughs> <laughs> and these are, these are particular like lyrics that you find compelling? Yeah. Just like they're just ones that like always have stuck out to me. Yeah. And that may have been a phase in my life when I was particularly focused in on lyrics that I've been revisiting lately. Cool. Well, yeah, my obsession is is kind of broad, broadly songwriting. It kind of kicked off with this past weekend. <clears throat> um, we watched the Avett Brothers documentary on HBO. Oh, I didn't know that existed. Yeah, that sounds great. It's um, it just came out, right? It just came out. It's on HBO now, and probably, <laughs> probably also go as we. <laughs> I think it's all the same. I think it's probably all the same. It's on HBO. We'll just call it at that. The the blanket of HBO. Yeah. Um, it's called May It Last, and it's directed by Judd Apatow. Apatow? Apatow? Apatow. Apatow, I think. And it's okay. it's recording them recording their um, album. What's their last album? 
the uh, I forget yeah. what it's called. Got you. So it's kind of like those eight bit brothers. Kind of a yellow, yellowish cover. Anyway, I've I'll, seen them I'll live. They were awesome. I saw them live too. Yeah, when did you see them? You when did you see time. them? Uh, well, a long time ago, like probably True like sadness? 2012 or 2013. True sadness. Is it Magpie and the Dandelion that has a yellow cover? Oh, yeah, That's no, it's not that one. Sorry. It's, you're right. It's not their last one. It's True Sadness. So it, it goes, it it uh, follows them while they're recording True Sadness. I also saw them live when they were opening for Guster, <laughs> 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 which I think is really funny. Cause that's, like, Wait, for who? They were opening for Guster. Oh. It was, like, right before they, like, blew, blew up. It was, right, like, right when Emotionalism came out. Yeah, definitely more out. famous than Guster now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Judd Apatow did a documentary about them. <laughs> They're not more famous than my heart. That's right. Probably not in Massachusetts, but maybe even in Massachusetts. Mm. Back to Massachusetts. Huh? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but the... <laughs> The documentary rem- reminded me they're they're a band that I listen to pretty often but hadn't in a while, and that um that documentary reminded me of like how good of songwriters both of them are, and yeah. how many songs that I love of theirs and how many like specifically lyrics that I love like it was it was great in the documentary like they were writing like some of the songs from true sadness i liked true sadness and there were some songs that i really found lyrically very beautiful and Mm -hmm. they were like writing it in the in the in the show and i i I was just like oh i love the lyric that they came up with and it was really cool to see them like get there you know Mm -hmm. um so yeah so just like after I watched that, I like made a big playlist of all the Ava Brothers songs I like, and kind of like coinciding with that, I I songwriting is obviously something I used to do a bunch, and yep. kind of had had fallen off of it for a long time. Um, kind of coinciding with when I I used to like write and perform a lot, and then I stopped performing, and so I stopped writing, and so mm-hmm. I had been kind of picking up writing again with no intention of necessarily performing. Um, and so that's been kind of happening and, like, going kind of slowly. And kind of after I watched that, I, I don't know, it, like, inspired me again of, like, oh, yeah, like, these... I had been, you know, I'd been just kind of, like, getting back into it and warming up again. Um, but after I watched the documentary, like, ended up, like, writing a few songs that I, like, actually liked again and that were, like, maybe more, like, lyrically intri- intricate than what I had been kind of, like, doing before. Um, awesome. Just, you know, just, like warming that flexing that muscle again warming back up so yeah i've been like every night before bed just coming in and doing a little songwriting and appreciating that's awesome good lyricist that's great you know yeah you are you were when you well i guess i should say are because the songs still exist but like when you were actively like you know pursuing well when you were like performing and stuff you were one of my favorite songwriters at the time, so you still are one of my favorite songwriters. Thanks, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's no, no bullshit. Yeah. I really like your songwriting. Thanks, bud. You can find listeners' records on the internet of me and Hannah singing my songs together. If you are really persistent i don't know where even to point them at oh yeah it's um it's kind of masked it's heyfortuna.wordpress.com <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very internet hidden because i forgot to to keep paying the for the domain name so <laughs> um you speaking of like we we used to sometimes like you used to help me write some stuff every once in a while Mm-hmm. And you wrote one of the, I, I feel like the, in Does This Ring a Bell, you wrote the, uh, like the best part of, of that song. Just like, it was like, just the, in the chorus, just like the one part, like Hurt Like Hell, What's I that? think. I think like Hurt, oh. you wrote that. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, I just, feel, uh, yeah, I feel like I was uh, like sometimes able to add like little bits or like help you figure out rhymes but like i never felt like i always felt like you were the creative director which 
was how it should have been. I was thinking about that, um, you know, after watching the Abbott Brothers documentary and seeing them kind of, it, like, I don't know what their process is typically, but it seemed like one of, they would come to each other with songs almost finished and just like, oh, I just have this one piece, which is where I end up a lot. Like, I have, hmm. I'll, I have these pieces that I really like. Like, I just am working on one now. I have two verses that I love, but I don't have a lot of these other pieces. And I was like, I wish I had... It's so funny that you were like, I wish I could write songs. Because I was like, I wish I had somebody who I could just be like, you know, here are these pieces, you know, help me figure out the rest. Like, I really... I loved seeing that in the documentary because they were both, like, equally brilliant songwriters um, and could just help... finish each other's songs and sentences you know which i think is why they're such a powerhouse because they have it's not just like one person trying to like pound these out by themselves it's like both of them working together Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so um ian was uh we were listening to an interview once with um gregory allen isakoff which is one of ian's Mm. favorite songwriters yeah i like him a lot um yeah, he he's he's excellent. Um, I really love his voice too. But like the way that he was describing songwriting was so different from the way that I feel like most people talk about it. Like he, do you remember that? Not not with enough detail to help. <laughs> he basically was like, I just like I just kind of sit down and I just like I let it. I let it come out and like, but basically like when, well, like, in the, like a lot of times the things that he ends up performing are like pretty much just something that came out of him in a few minutes once. Hmm. Like shit. Just... I was literally going to say like a <laughs> shit. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> Got shit on the mind. <laughs> I feel like yeah, that's really uncommon for... I mean, I've never written a song, but I feel like that's definitely not what most people yeah, go through. I mean, because I know how much work Aaron would put into songwriting, and I feel like it's, I feel like it's like, he in general, he just had that, that kind of vibe of like, very chill about everything, and so it might just be a difference in approach, or it might just be the like... Or, I wonder how much of that is like, not doubting him or anything, like, sometimes it happens like that, where you sit down and just like, an entire song comes out, but then sometimes you like give it a second draft or like or like you know almost all of it comes out and you have to adjust a few things right but okay yeah so okay, i don't so know i'm not doubting him gregory allen is a cub is a liar and his is music a fucking is liar shit i don't know but he's also like i think for somebody he seems very prolific like it seems like he has a lot yeah. of stuff so it could be like he I could if if he writes songs all the time, then he's so practiced at it. I could totally mm-hmm. see that that like it just comes out in a polished way because like mm-hmm. like the, he's just totally warmed up and you know, um, yeah, yeah. I, I gotta mean, add him to my list. Supposedly, he- uh, yesterday came out of Paul McCartney's head like from a dream when he woke up, mm. like mm-hmm. the complete song, and it was so clear to him that he thought that it was someone else's song I that he had like- heard. I feel like things like that at first, I'm like, that is so insane. And then I'm like, what? It's still his brain. Like, he, it's the same <laughs> as writing it. Like, it's it's a cool story. But, yeah. you know. Um, <laughs> You're really tearing everything down. I really am. I'm sorry. Gre- <laughs> uh, Gregory <coughs> Allen is, is a coffer. Is that how you say his last name? He has one it, of yeah. my favorite lyrics, which is in 3, a- 3 a.m. Um, he mm-hmm. says, I ain't out there to cheat you. See, I killed that damn coyote in me. I love that. Love that line. <laughs> yeah, I got... You have to, like, go through the whole song to get there, but I'm, like, all about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he killed that damn coyote. That has some of the best lyrics of any song. <laughs> um, oh, there's another one. Uh, another Gregory Allen is a cuff lyric. Gregory? It's in the song The Universe. <laughs> Gregory Allen gives it a cough. Uh, it's the universe. It's in the universe. Um, oh. The universe is something. She's got 
fuck. She's got infinity ahead of her. That's she's the line. She's this got song about the universe. Fuck. <laughs> she's, got, <laughs> she's got infinity ahead of her. So she's got to fuck. Okay, wait. <laughs> the universe. Wait, hang on. Ian pulled up the lyrics. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Ian. I'm welcome. Okay, the universe, she's wounded, but she's still got infinity out of her. She's still got you and me, and everybody says that she's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I don't remember how that one line goes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we know. (laughs) I made up that rhythm. (laughs) But the first part was real. The first part was how it goes. So real. So real. (laughs) Too real. So, uh, that's a great. I'm really excited to hear that you're getting back into songwriting. Actually, yeah, me too. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. Yeah. If I ever finish this one, I'll send it to you. It's I really like it. I I'm, I was trying to think about like what it was like the kind of getting back into it, warming up, like writing things that I didn't really like that weren't that interesting, and something that I just was like so inspired by that documentary because the Evett brothers have like such a like, they don't, their songs are so weird sometimes and have, like, mm-hmm. weird parts all together in one song, mm-hmm. and uh, and their lyrics are so fun and mm-hmm. eclectic that I was like, I don't know, it was like, oh yeah, I don't have to, like, I can experiment and I can, I don't have to stay in this key and I can, like, write some crazy lyrics, like, I don't have to, like, I don't know, it, it was hard yeah. to describe, but it was like... You play by anyone's rules but your own. Yeah. yeah, it just was a good like reminder of like, oh, this is something that I can do, and it's something that I like to do, and it's something that I, I'm good at, and I can, you know, uh, play around with it or something. I think one thing it, it was hard to continue in songwriting when I was like really happy. I think me kind of like getting into a really happy relationship kind of like coincided with me dropping off of songwriting because songwriting is such a good way to like process feelings of like frustration and hurt so like as a teenager and you know that sort of like journey into adulthood you have a lot of raw emotions to work with and so it's kind Mm -hmm. of less of a something that you a tool that you reach for to process your feelings and more of a of a discipline and a practice it seems like yeah once you're in a place of stability you know because you could be like oh i'll just i feel great maybe i'll watch the west wing all night (laughs) <laughs> Instead of being like, or, you know, I should go and work on my songwriting or something, so. <laughs> That's anyway. an interesting point. Anywho. But yeah, I actually think that the Avert Brothers, part of what is so interesting about their songs and about a lot of artists that I like is that they, you know, there are songs that they have that are about breakups and heartbreaks and, and like, troubles, but there's also, like, songs about, there's songs about you know, things that clearly happened to them a long time ago and their songs about their why they're like live like having kids and like their wives and their families and like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Kind of like all in the arsenal. Which is cool. <clears throat> yeah, and songs that are probably not about them at all, but just yeah. you know, portraits of well they they say that actually, portraits of a moment or something. But Beautiful. I'm there, gonna watch that documentary. It's good. It's really good. I loved it. Except there's one part, and I think you'll know it when it happens, where I'm just like, ugh! They're so melodramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're I being wait. so melodramatic right now. <laughs> Let me just say this before we move on. Wait. I have a, um, I have like a, an hour long commute now. So if you ever want to send me chunks of audio. Of oh. incomplete songs, I have a lot of time to think about them. Yeah, I would actually really like Chunk. that. I could send you chunks in like notes of like, what do you think should go here? Or, like, oh, yeah, or like, do you ever just come up with melodies or anything like that? I mean, Ian can tell you, I write, I I, I write songs all the time. <laughs> I'm always like, I don't want to go to work today, <laughs> like that kind of song. <laughs> well, maybe That's I'll a- just. That's right, you know, a uh, a regular theme. Um, also singing about how cute the cats are. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, they're, they're very cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I will send you some. I'll send you. I'll record this one I'm working on. You can help me come up with a chorus for it. That'd be great. Okay. All right. <laughs> no pressure. I'm relying on you. No pressure. <laughs> this all rests on your shoulders. Aaron, it's great. I love the chorus. It needs more cats. <laughs> I'll send you 
a 30 minute clip of, of handsome Jack meowing and you can add it in and then it'll be done. <laughs> okay. That sounds like my life. Cool. So Ben. Fun. I'm next. Ben's next. Ben's next. It's Ben. Who's next? <laughs> it's Ben. Well, I didn't really have like an obsession this week because I've just been reading the foundation books and watching more of the West Wing. But I have had something that I've been thinking about a lot, and oh. I would like to share with you. Great. Okay. I really want to get another cat. Uh, oh, shit. Double and... the trouble. A you brother got a for gun in the brain oven. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat that? That was beautiful. <laughs> Please. I said, I said, you've got a kitty. Oh, no. I've got a, ki- a kitty bun in the brain of it. <laughs> I didn't hear that before. <laughs> oh, I really do. I just... It's like, Como's been so playful lately, and... Well, he's always playful, but, like, when Kylie and oh, I... Oh, my God. I forgot. I wanted to talk about that fucking video. Oh, my God. I've been literally obsessed with. <laughs> Everybody has been obsessed with it. It could go viral. It's the best <laughs> video I've ever taken in my life. Can you just, it, Should we describe it? it or just enjoy? It's on my Twitter, so listeners can go look at it on Twitter. Listeners should already it, be following you on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. True. You can probably throw up a direct link to it. Yeah, yeah I can link directly to this okay. video. We're not going to ruin it because it's very, very good. It's actually my I, pinned tweet now. So oh, if you good. go to my profile, it's just there in the top always. Uh, let me also say this. Um... Como also looks very handsome in it. He's a, he's a good-looking kid. He's a good-looking kid. He's kidding. got like some longer like furs happening around his his chest, like mm-hmm. a like a mane yeah. thing happening. Yeah. So his head or something. You're thinking about it. What uh? What's Kylie? What's Kylie weighing in? How's Kylie so, weighing in? <laughs> she's not as like gung ho about it as I am, but like I'm also not. I mean, all right. Here's the thing. I, the reason I, I want other cats is because I love cats, and also having Como's been awesome. And lately, Kylie and I have been really busy while we're at home, so like we haven't had time to play with him that much. Mm. And he gets kind of restless, and I, I always feel bad because like, if he had another kitty friend, they could like play together while we're busy, especially if we get another young one. Mm. Um, but then you call it young one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then... Kylie has, I share these concerns with Kylie, but she always has to end up being the one voicing them because I'm like, I want a cat. Um, our apartment's pretty small. And so, like, I, I don't know if each of them would be able to kind of have their own space. And then, then how big is your apartment? How many square feet? I don't know. I think like 800. Is that really small? <laughs> how big, yeah, how much small. is your house? It's about, it's, it's about, it's similar to your house. Our house is 520 square feet. All right. I was probably like 700 then. My, my, so my, I guess. we have two cats. Yeah, so. that's true. That's true. You do. In Hold on. I, I have another reality check for Ben, though. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Okay. But you're going to grad school, right? And where's yeah. Kylie going? Are you guys she's, even going to like be in the same space? Yeah, she's going. She already said she's going with me wherever I go. Oh, good. Aw. Yeah. Which was very Shout nice out to of Kylie. Him. For real. <laughs> Kylie, there's a lot of great jobs in Durham, um, and I know some people, so you can just, um, not that you need that because you're amazing, but uh, you guys should come here and hang out with us all the time. Yay. The end. Agreed. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so, the only thing is, if I get into school in Boston, one of the two I applied to, she's already had, she already has a job lined up in Boston. Oh, okay. So chill, chill, she would have chill. a job right away. And that's why, so I was, I, the reason it came up, like, especially recently was I was like, if I get into MIT or Northeastern, do you think we could get another cat this summer? Because we'll, we know we'll be in Boston for, like, a long time now. Uh, but it's it's more money. I mean, it's not that much more money. Um, uh, but the main yeah. thing... Kylie's, like, concerned about, and I'm also a little concerned about it, is, like, Como's person... Speaking of Como, he just jumped oh, up and flirted. I heard <laughs> that. He oh. said he wanted a little brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, we we were a little worried about Como, like, 
I guess, like, his personality possibly changing if we have another cat. Not like his, but him, or him maybe feeling less comfortable being how he is with us now, because we really like how he is with us now. Like, he follows us around a lot and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's really cute. And, I don't know, I also get worried about, like, because sometimes cats just don't like each other, and there's not a lot you can do about it. Although, I know you guys, this is kind of, this is one of the reasons I want to talk to you about it, Hannah and Ian, because I know you guys had problems with that when you first brought Squeaks mm-hmm. and Jack together, but they seem mm-hmm. like they're buds now. Did you notice that they, like, changed at all once you got them, like, acclimated to each other? Their personalities? Yeah. You mean? Yeah. Um, When they were not, like, when they were fighting, mm-hmm. that like, Jack was very different. Like, he wouldn't come when you called him anymore and stuff, but it was because he was scared. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, because Squeaks had completely taken over yeah. the house, as I've talked about before. Once they were, like, cool with each other, I, I wouldn't say that their personalities have changed. Yeah, it's it's just, they just need to be acclimated to each other. Yeah, and that's the thing, Ben, is that, like, the reason that our cats didn't get along is because we did a very bad job introducing them to each other. Mm. Um, we just were lazy about it because Squeaks had met so many other cats before, and I had had two other cats living in my apart- in my 700-square-foot apartment, um, like month like like i feel like within a month or two before that they they was when they had just left and we had just been like hey these two cats are here now and everybody was fine like hmm. one of them always was scared but um but like jack had just had a new best friend and they just like you know played See, all over the house and got into shit i feel like you hear people say that it's sometimes the case where cats just like some some two cats will never get along but i also feel like that might just be because most people don't know how to introduce cats properly to each other. Right. I think that th- certainly there can you can reach a point in two cats' relationship where they probably won't ever get along. Mm-hmm. But one, I think that that's like very rare. Like I've only, I've only ever seen it happen like maybe one or two times in all the my cat from hell that I've watched. And two and <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask if Jackson Galaxy would agree with that statement. I think so. I really do. I like cuz I can only off the top of my head at least I can only remember two cases. I've seen a lot where cats didn't were fight where cats were fighting and I've only seen like two where the solution didn't end with them like chilling out on a bed together. Hmm. Um and I think just, in one of those cases the cat had like a severe mental disorder or something that had to be yeah, treated. Oh, right. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't like it, it's not common. And then the second thing is like you very very much have control over how that introduction goes Mm -hmm. you know if you if you if you do it properly and if you watch enough jackson galaxy ahead of time you will do it properly (laughs) or i can help you (laughs) since i've watched all of it ask you for help (laughs) (laughs) why watch it yourself when hannah has done all the legwork for you (laughs) then then it 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 really shouldn't be a problem it's like cats they're not People think they're so mysterious. I, now I feel like I'm just rehashing all this Jackson Galaxy stuff I talked about already. But like they're they're really really not. It's just yeah. that people don't don't understand them as 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 easily as they do dogs right away. Did I tell you I watched a documentary about cats over Christmas break? Just mm-hmm. like randomly on my own. It's on Netflix. It's like 50 minutes long. It's called The Lion in Your Living Room. <laughs> and it's actually really interesting. I would recommend it. One of the things I talk about is how, like, every cat's set of meows is very different. Yeah. And they all, like, develop them with their owner. Like, you kind of develop a language with your cat so that Mm -hmm. they, like, meow. Like, you know, if they meow and it gives them food, then they'll do that same exact meow the next time to get food. Mm -hmm. And you build, like, a language with each other like that. Like, we know Como's different meows now. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's just for you. Yep. There's also, like, there's a there's a more universal thing that cats do with purring where if they are, if it's like a, like I want something from you purr, then there's like a little bit more meat to it. Like first thing in the morning when the cat wakes you up mm-hmm. purring, it's a different type of purr than when they're just like hanging out. On yeah. Your that was in the them. documentary. There was a woman in it who was like an expert on animal communication and she measured her own cats. She like recorded yeah. her own cats purr when he yeah. wanted food. And when he was just like being affectionate, when he wanted mm-hmm. food, there was this extra high pitch like frequency component yeah 
And that I bet it was the same lady. I think I heard it might have been this yeah. American Life or something. And it was like this Radio at the Lab. same frequency that human babies scream at when they want food or something like that. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's pretty cool. Crazy stuff. Cool as fuck. Yeah. One thing I don't get is they say that cats don't meow to communicate with each other. They only do it to communicate with humans. But really? Yeah. That wasn't in your documentary. No. Fucking lame ass documentary. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought that was a thing. Maybe I'm wrong. Because here's the thing. When when Squeaks goes someplace that Jack can't reach her, um, he makes this like horrible yodeling sound. <laughs> it's like that's how you describe it, right? <laughs> it's like <laughs> that doesn't sound like a meow. That sounds like a proprietary cat noise. Cat to cat, <laughs> cat to cat noise. Right, and it's like it's not directed at us. It's just like a general like it's, it's like all the oxen free. It's not for yeah. you. All the oxen free. <laughs> hey, river. <laughs> exactly. So I don't know what that's about. Yeah. Although sometimes he'll look at us when he does that. So sometimes, but sometimes he's in a whole different room. Hmm. And then also, I think it goes both ways, sort of, because I've learned. That squeaks, and I think this is from when she was a kitten. Squeaks comes running if you make a really high pitched noise of any kind, or if I sing. I don't know if that's about, but like <laughs> of any kind, Hannah. <laughs> but like if you make a like a high pitched squeal, she comes running. Really? And, I, and Ian was telling me that her first owners used to like call her or like talk to her a lot by being like, "Baby squeak," right? Hmm. So I feel like that's why. Interdasting. Mm. <laughs> so. Cool. I think that's we're going to well, get another I cat. I think you could acclimate them to each other. Yeah, do it. I mean, I know, I know we're going to get a cat at some no. point. I just don't know when it will be. <laughs> too many cats per square feet. Ian says yeah, we can't you, get another cat, too. You I get a like cat, Ben. solidarity. Hmm? You get a cat. No, no, no. You get a cat, Ben. And then if it doesn't work out, Hannah and Ian will take it. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yeah, and I'll, I'll I'll tell you how to acclimate it to your apartment. <laughs> She's winking. <laughs> I'm an expert. The first thing you want to do... Just dump them in a room together and lock them in. Don't even look. Also, rig the sprinklers to drip water on them at the same time. Yeah. And, and just give, put out one bowl of food and water. Because uh, that'll build a sense of community. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Hannah. Anyway. <laughs> so, nobody follow any of that advice. The end. The end. Great segment, well, Ben. That's a good, <laughs> Great good job, segment, ben. ben. That was a good one. I'm Thanks. rooting for you, a, a new cat. Yeah, Thanks. me too. Ben, uh, I, I'm not, I don't want to sound biased, but you should get an orange cat. I've been thinking about it. They're well, the thing is, like, the best. there's this uh, guy I follow on Twitter who's a voice actor, and he has two cats. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is a short hair black cat, and then he has a long hair black cat. Um, mm-hmm. And it's really, I don't know, it's really cute, and I like my black cat. Yeah, he's a great black cat. Yeah. But sometimes black cats can be crazy. I like those gray cats. Sometimes any cat. Can- oh, I do too. I really like those gray blue cats. blue ones. I think yeah. Cousin Willa like has one. Find. Yes, she does. The ones that she look does. like this is gonna sound like a dumb thing, but they they look like they have like a soft color. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like it's yeah. a soft gray, not as in like their yeah. fur looks soft, but like it's a soft yeah. color. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like they're always in soft focus or something. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But here's the thing: I I'm not like big on stereotyping people, but I do have some cat stereotypes that I feel like have been well established in my long history with cats Mm -hmm. the orange cats are always just the nicest cats black cats can be crazy in really good ways and really bad ways but they're always some kind of crazy Como's crazy so yes he is crazy he's a great fun kind of crazy yeah that's like full of energy velvet was a very god (laughs) unpleasant kind of crazy (laughs) that was a black cat that we had growing up and there were many of them and they, they were all crazy um I've heard torties are, are mean. I don't really have an opinion on that. And, um... What about just regular uh, tabbies? 
Like a brown tabby. Boring. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't know. Those are the those are the, the main stereotypes I think of. Do you know any cat stereotypes, Ian? <laughs> I don't think particularly. Um, oh, I know one. Hairless cats are weird looking. Gross. <laughs> gross and horrible. <laughs> Hor- horrible wrinkle monsters. Have you ever watched... Have you ever... Wa- have you ever... Uh, Spit it out. <laughs> have you ever watched an episode of My Cat from Hell that involved them? Those no. horrible things? No. Do you know that you have to... Don't you, they get, like, really cold? You, or something? Uh, you, I don't know, but you have to clean the folds of their skin. Oh. Uh, yeah. Wait, they don't clean it themselves? And no. No. They're terrible. <laughs> They're broken. They're broken cats. What? What? They still yeah. deserve love, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, and that's Just why not... I'm not going to get one, because I know I couldn't love it. Yeah, that's that's it. Just not in my life. There are plenty of people who want that shit in their yeah. house. Not in my house. <laughs> okay, should we go now? Yep. Yeah. You go. Okay. Let's get out of I here. choose you, Pikachu. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's leave. Okay. Goodbye. No. So, um, <laughs> I my obsession this week has been extremely um as Ian can attest because he's heard a lot about it it's had to do with mirrors and suppliers in China and lots of things that would never fly on a podcast like this because they're not interesting even to me so I'm bringing in a ringer this is why Ian is here because (laughs) Ian has a great obsession he's been literally laughing about it this entire time as we've been recording and talking about other things for research purposes he's been laughing for research purposes and he's going to tell us what his obsession is this week. What's your obsession, Ian? Um, it is... What's the best way to describe it? It's sort of um, machine learning and neural network stuff uh, for entertainment purposes. Yeah. So, <laughs> effectively, using all, all of that to create wonderful gibberish nonsense. Yes. Mm. <laughs> um, one form of that is, uh, I think Ben remembers, there's that game I made everyone play a couple Christmases ago where you play with your predictive keyboard and make nonsense phrases oh, yeah, I still and do send that. them to each other. Yeah. That's sort, of, that's sort of related, although I think some of those have a degree of like a machine learning component and some of them are just, it's figuring out how often you use certain words and mm. yeah, weighting the percentiles on it. A lot it. on the operating system, probably. Um, but for example, I'm going to send one to Aaron right now. I'm just going to keep pressing the middle button of my options. And you have to read it out loud when you get it. That's one of the okay. rules of the game. Okay, I sent it to you. If you don't get it. All right, oh. I, I got it. Okay. The only thing that you can do is to be at the house at a <laughs> trivia with... The way in a very happy or well-considered phone conversationalist <laughs> and prejudiced by the way. <laughs> so you just, can I send you one back? I just, I just pressed the middle button. Yeah. How many times? Until you have like a sentence. Yeah. It might okay. try and string together a bunch of uh, us and those and. Yeah. No, this is to. looking good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> that can be a little run on sometimes. Okay, here we go. Um, the way I do it again, I have a great way for a few years back on my way home. And I don't think it's time for a few years back on my way home. And I don't think it's time for a while ago. But the only one that is, the only one that you are the only thing, that you are the only thing that you are. The only one. <laughs> <laughs> You are the only one that you are. It's a great song lyric, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not, actually. It's kind of trite. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. This is... Uh. Have you ever heard of Everyone's uh, AI? Everyone's... No, I haven't. It's a... Um... Have you heard of Johnny Sun? Yeah. He's a... Yeah, he's like a Twitter account that also wrote a, wrote a book recently called Everyone's an Alien and You're an Alien Too. Um, and he has this whole, like, persona of an alien that's visiting Earth, and it, but is really cute and doesn't really know how to type that well, so he makes a lot of typos. 
um, and is just like fascinated with everything around him. And someone mm-hmm. made a like a fan bot that uses, I think it's like uses Johnny Sun tweets, mm-hmm. and then combines them with people's drawings that they make on Quick Draw, which I think is like some website, and makes like <laughs> cartoons out of it. Which I think is like some. <laughs> <laughs> And they're really funny and often really cute. Like, one of them is just a picture, a really badly drawn star with a face, and it says, Am I too wrinkled to be a star? Maybe a fast star would be a better star. I was more <laughs> bad. Now I am okay. <laughs> I, I like what's, friend looking at him. What's next on your AI list? Um, well, that reminds me. The predictive keyboard thing, there's a just sort of vague group of... It's it's like scientists and artists and um, on a website called uh, called Botnik, and Ben might actually know it because I think at some point uh, in an earlier episode you were talking about that uh, fake Harry Potter the portrait of what looked like a large pile of ash. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, that's where that came from, and that was sort of the same setup. They effectively fed it a bunch of Harry Potter stuff and then ran it through the the same sort of keyboard thing. They probably, did a, a probably... Star Trek script recently that was also very funny. Mm-hmm. They ran a bunch of Star Trek uh, The Next Generation episodes through it. Um, so funny. Love this. One, one that I'm fond of uh, in particular, though, is a... It's got its own website now, but it's a blog called uh, Lewis and Quark. <laughs> oh, my, my face is not close enough. Yeah, you um, keep on moving away from the microphone. I'm sorry. I'm unpracticed. <laughs> um... <laughs> It's also got the name right now AIweirdness dot com, which yes. I'm sure we'll leave a link to. I'm on the, I'm on this website right now just in case that's not what you were going to talk about. <laughs> but um, but the person who runs this one, they just pick different things and effectively feed it a ton of stuff. And um, this particular one, it's it's a recurrent neural network. Which has taken me forever to even vaguely figure out because all the explanations are total jargon. Um, but effectively, you give it a pile of inputs, and these recurrent ones are really good for dealing with text because it's different than looking at a picture, where you're you can see the whole thing at once with text, like the order um, mm-hmm. and speech. The order is really important mm-hmm. too, so it needs to be able to develop context. So hmm. what ends up happening is they put in the inputs and it starts going into all these other layers on the inside before it gets to its output. But it um, it has like a feedback system in there. So it keeps kind of cycling things around and looking at what came in and looking at new things that come in. And it sort of creates a little bit of a memory and starts building up context rules. Um, which is interesting because sometimes it means that it just gets obsessed about something for some reason, too. <laughs> <laughs> and for a little while it, it just uh you'll you'll see these big blocks of time where all of a sudden instead of just seemingly different sentences it just like becomes obsessed with uh oxen or something um, <laughs> um I'm seeing if i can find a couple of good in particular ones um <laughs> there's one instance where um there was a lot of recipes. Maybe oh Hannah my God, can those find are it. My favorite. Um, I have I have one pulled up. These are my favorite. Do you want me to read it? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> this one is pears. I love this one. I actually had a. Th- I thought it would be funny to like do a YouTube video of me making this recipe exactly as written. <laughs> it's. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's called pears or to gar. Garnished meme. <laughs> Meats. That's just what the first line says. <laughs> a fourth pound, bones or fresh bread. Optional. <laughs> Half cup of flour, one teaspoon vinegar, fourth teaspoon lemon lime juice or lime juice, two eggs. I'll stop after a few but the, these parts are funny. Brown salmon and oil. Add cr- <laughs> Add creamed meat and other deep mixture. Discard <laughs> discard fillets. Discard head and turn into nonstick spice. Pour four eggs onto a clean onto clean a thin fat to sink halves. <laughs> I 
just like how you brown the fillets and then discard them. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh wait, here's some good ones. Um, here's uh, ancient wisdom, so like parables. <laughs> <laughs> So, the way that this one ended up working was, let's see, um, yeah, it was just a whole bunch of parables and proverbs and things like that. Um, So, here's some examples. A fox smells it better than a fool for a day. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's what my mom always said. (laughs) uh, A fool in a teacup is a silent for a needle in the sail. (laughs) Wow. Uh, here's Profound. a list of some that almost wait, make. Wait, no, please! You just give so many good ones. No man is the better pan on the hunter. <laughs> <laughs> here's another one. Do not come to the cow. <laughs> That's it. Uh, a good wine makes the best sermon. No wise man ever ever wishes to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a good anvil does not make the most noise. <laughs> uh, a good excuse. A good excuse is as good as a rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I really like the paint colors ones. Have you seen these? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, that's like a Twitter, right? Yeah, it's on this one too. Um, this is someone I'm looking at, Clardic Fug, <laughs> which is like a green, Burf Pink. It's like whatever it is about these neural network flubs is like I like the recipe for humor. Yeah, it's it like, makes me cry so often. It's like it's like close enough. It's it's surprise it's like surprisingly close but just off the mark. Cuz if they're complete nonsense, they're not really funny, but they're funniest when it's like almost there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very close, very but no barrel. cigar. Yeah. Very barrel. <laughs> Burf frame. Like. <laughs> Ooh, man. These are Here, so good. Here's one that, uh, that's germane to, uh, to those of us living up in Massachusetts because it was a, let's see, eight years worth of bills introduced to the state legislature that were fed into it. Hmm. So then it popped out a whole bunch of laws. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see an act to com- combat gas in the town of nantucket <laughs> um an act preserving the disclosure of dental hygienist communities <laughs> an act relative to the expansion of the division of back rubs in the city of quincy <laughs> I want a division of back rooms. <laughs> that sounds great. Do you want to, like, can I do some Christmas carols? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, this is, um, these are Christmas carols generated by a neural network, or, like, names for Christmas carols. Actually, they're lyrics. So, this is, like, first or second pass. Um, these are joyful, but they don't make a lot of sense. <clears throat> the cattle around the Christmas tree will be a very special Christmas with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's another line cup on the earth that's how I imagine you would do that <laughs> um, the babe the son of Mary he stumbled their flowers and all <laughs> walk in him love dingle bells jingle bells <laughs> jingle bells with bells are ringing <laughs> dingle dingle bells Uh, Oh my god. Dingle bells. (laughs) Can I. Another thing I just want to point out that I like about this uh, Lewis and Quark. Yeah. Which is AIWeirdness.com is it's run by a woman. I just love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. And she's gaining notoriety from it. I heard her. I saw an interview with her somewhere. Yeah. There's a. um, We'll probably link to that too. There's a article that was in slate where it was talking about um it was just sort of uh, interviewing her a little bit about the process um and she was going into the fact that she was trying to teach it knock knock jokes um (laughs) and it became obsessed 
with telling uh, a joke where the punchline was like a cow with no lips. <laughs> okay, this is, this was a fun part of the uh, of the Christmas one. You know, Ian was talking about how it gets obsessed with things sometimes. Mm-hmm. So this for some reason the Sandman figures very prominently in the Neural Nets Christmas mythology, despite having been mentioned in the data set only once. Sometimes the Neural Net latches onto particular words for no reason I can see. Maybe it's a Neil Gaiman fan. So these are some of the things that they came up with. The Sandman so be joyful now. It was born today. Gloria in Excelsis Deo. <laughs> The Sandman so loved to seek the world. The Sandman so loved so deep and sing and the sun. <laughs> is it trying to so- tell us that Jesus is the Sandman? Maybe. Ooh, man, there's a good one. The world and joy of the sleigh. Santa baby bore sweet Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> is, this one is making me a little... This is Wikipedia articles invented by the Neural Network. <laughs> List of list of movie posters with lamps in them. How to trick people into thinking you're a wizard. List of people who died with tortoises on their head. Category: farts in literature. Category: political posters using an octopus. List of all Wikipedia lists that do not contain themselves. <laughs> that one's deep, y'all. That, that one's one is deep. really meta. I like that a lot. <laughs> this is cracking my frick up. <laughs> great, great obsession, Ian. You do a good job. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> yeah, this is a really good one. Yeah, Hannah and I just like we bump into the fact that there's some new stuff posted from. Uh, <laughs> Usually this one website, and then we just, like, sit there laughing in the car or on the couch for half an hour. Naming beers. Dang river. (laughs) Yam quack. Yam quack. (laughs) Pimperdignistic the blacksmith with cherry. (laughs) That's so good. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, I was just looking at this. The most interesting Magic the Gathering cards made by artificial intelligence. Is this the same person? No, this was different. Um. This first one, you know what Magic the Gathering cards look like, right? Yeah. Guys? Um, this first one, the name at the top is Your Egg. <laughs> <laughs> it's a creature, a mm-hmm. human knight, and this is the description. Target land can't be countered. Put any number of tree folk creature cards from your graveyard on the bottom of your library put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield unearth cards to their owner's hands that wasn't that sounds like that, that one's not that's as, as much gobbledygook oh. as any magic <laughs> gathering card to yeah. <laughs> but um i think this oh might have been God. one of the earliest things i ever bumped into that was talking about um <laughs> these recurrent neural networks and it and it's just a bunch of Mag- Magic the Gathering cards, and it has all the little modifiers and things on it. But, again, it, like, latched onto something. Like, it just got it in its memory that, oh, this is a good rule to have, until it finally, like, excised it by experience. But it kept giving um, all these different cards an ability that was just... <laughs> it was just called Tromple. <laughs> 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 and, for, and like forever it didn't explain what the hell that was <laughs> just that they had it <laughs> this sounds like a lot of fads it's like well why do i yeah. need this just you just need it <laughs> yeah. i think i found my favorite of the invented paint colors what is it stanky bean <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, I'm gonna poop. pee myself. Bur- I like really have bur- to pee. Pink. All right, yeah. Well we should wrap up, so let's do homework. Um this is great. Mm-hmm. Ian. Great laugh. Yeah, good one. Great everybody go check out more of these. Find your favorite. Send us links to your favorite one. Follow Janelle Shane on Twitter. She's Janelle C. Shane. Ian, you can mention that in your homework. Go ahead, Aaron. Um, cool. My homework is uh, watch the Avett Brothers documentary on HBO. Yeah. And write a song if you want to. Yeah. Why not? Write Try. a song if you want to. 
Why not try? Um, my home, my Twitter is at Ernburn, and I review lesbian movies and books on Instagram at Lesbian Movie Reviews. You reviewed, but I'm a cheerleader this week. I did, or uh, last week. On Sunday. On Saturday. I saw it. This week. This week. Yep. I'm not on Instagram that much. It's not. I just posted a bad movie to not watch. Uh Uh-oh. So don't watch it. go see what that one was. Yeah, don't watch it. (laughs) Yeah. Is it my turn? Or Aaron? Oh, yeah, you said your tour. Um, My homework is to get a cat. (laughs) Then get a second cat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, I guess watch that Netflix documentary, Lion in Your Living Room. It's really interesting, I mm. think. Cool. Um, my Twitter is any disco Greg. Uh, my pinned tweet is the best cat video I've ever taken and maybe that ever ex- existed. Yeah. So check it out. Yeah, go check it out. Um, my Twitter is anthropology. It's like anthropology, like the study of people but with an H at the beginning of it and a Y at the end of it. My Twitter is, I forgot what it was and it's not a thing. (laughs) (laughs) What's your homework? Um, You have a very long and confusing handle, um, which will lead you nowhere. But uh, (laughs) no, uh, check out the, um, if you have the, uh, the fun little smartphone, keyboard option which most of them do play around with it that's always fun Mm -hmm. send some nonsense to your friends Mm -hmm. um never explain never explain (laughs) um never apologize check out the uh the lewis and cork (laughs) blog the quickest way is um going to aiweirdness.com um and what was the other place oh uh if you look up botnik b-o-t-n-i-k yep um that should lead you to uh, the predictive keyboard people over there, which is also fun because they're the ones who did the Harry Potter and the Portrait of what looked like a large pile of ash. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, such a good one! Um, and if you want to talk to us as an ear snack, you can reach us on Twitter at um, I almost said anthropology at two broad pod t o o broad pod. Or you can email us way too broad at gmail dot com. So and then also what else? Leave us a review. We love reviews. And um, on Podknife and on iTunes and really more in the opposite order. First iTunes and then Podknife. <laughs> and um, uh, that's that's uh, that's all she wrote. That's all, folks. That's all. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into our neural network generated podcast this week. <laughs> Thanks for listening. The podcast candle has been extinguished. So. Bye. 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 See, there's a pause. I'm just saying. There was no pause! <laughs> is this like, what do you think, Ben? You know what's the worst part? Is that the listeners will never be able to t- uh, settle this because we do it right no. before we start. That's true. Yeah, but it's, it's settled. I, I've settled I it. I think there's there's a pretty long pause. <laughs> yeah, thank you, there is. <laughs> Relative there's to no the pause. other pauses. There's no pause. Ian, will you talk, please? Uh, sure. For testing, say your ABCs. I don't want to. I want to use your test phrase. Oh, okay. I can't remember it. Though. These are words. These are words. <laughs> no, these are the words I'm saying. These, these are words. These are the words I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying words. These I'm are... saying words. These are the words I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Do it again. These are words. <laughs>